Fantastic. So, a couple of times discussing this HP X300 camera, I said multi camera. So, now we're going to move you sort of stage right this way, if my cameras don't mind following me. Uh, and I'm going to ask my assistant, Natasha Iglesias, to come up here and help us out for this one. All right? Thanks very much, Natasha. So, here we have another AG HPX300 camera. But it looks slightly different than this ghost operated one. What looks different about it? Well, it's got a bunch of stuff stuck on the camera. Now, if you're into multi camera operation, much of this stuff looks familiar to you. We've got a Panasonic VTLH80 viewfinder, LCD monitor. You've got rear zoom and focus controls on the lens, so I could be watching my viewfinder, operating my camera from back here very comfortably, right? Uh, but something that you're not as familiar with is this guy right here. This we're going to call the Panasonic AG BS300. Well, this piece is the AGCA300. And then uh, we've got a base station that's the BS300. What does the CA stand for? Totally awesome. <laughs> right. What's so totally awesome about this studio adapter unit? Natasha, can you come in right here? Check it out. Coming out of the camera, SDI out and gen lock in, that's connected right here to the CA, the camera adapter. Right? That's sending a couple of signals back and forth from the camera to the base station. Can you just get a, a, a quick look at the back here? We've got power coming in. We've got GPI coming in. Um, some return signals. Also, paint box control. Cool. All right. Can, can we switch off of the lipstick for a sec? Yeah? All right. So hang out by the base station for a second. So this gigantic blue cable is basically a digital multiplexer. It's carrying signals back and forth from the base station to the camera adapter and allows you to extend your control over immense distances. We've got 25 meter cable, 50 meter cable, 100 meter cable, all right? That 100 meter cable is giving you 300 feet from your engineer. Camera guy can operate from here. As long as you're connected with this digitally multiplexed cable, you get a host of signals, all right? And uh, before we get into the looks of the paint box and, and the base station, I'm just gonna run you guys through a little bit more PowerPoint. I'm sorry to do it to you, but it's just the most effective way I know how to communicate this. What's up, Tom? Uh, Lax in the chat room wants to know, uh, what codec is used when connecting to a computer via FireWire? So um, I'm going to take that to mean when you connect to FireWire, when you connect to your computer FireWire, how, how you can record? Uh, let me ask. <laughs> so uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me hazard a guess here. If you've recorded footage to the camera, and it's already been recorded, and you're connecting FireWire, you can just do a file transfer. You can just send the information to a hard drive or to a computer ready for editing. You have to sort of select your codec ahead of time, whether it's AVC Intro 50, AVC Intro 100, DVC Pro HD. There's another method that Lax might be getting at where you're actually connecting a live signal. So it's not something that you've already recorded, but you're turning the camera on, you're not going to record in the head, but you're going to send some video and audio information and time code over FireWire to a computer. In that case, your computer gets to decide what codec you want to record in. DVC Pro HD is very effective that way. I haven't had much experience with the intros yet, but DVC Pro HD would be pretty good. Yeah? Perfect. So, Virg, can you PowerPoint me up, brother? Cool. All right. The Panasonic AG BS300 Camcorder Studio Kit. And remember, the BS and the CA both stand for totally awesome. Awesome. So, let's talk about a couple signals that we're passing back and forth. HDSDI back from the camera. Actually, you know what would be very effective is if you could put my lipstick camera as the uh, PIP in the, in the PowerPoint verge. Yes. So, fantastic. Natasha, there we are. HDSDI out of the camera, right? Next signal. Control. That's right here. Paint box coming through the multiplexer, through this gigantic blue cable right here into remote input. See it? You see it. All right. Next signal, Genlock. That's right here. Genlock coming out of the base station into the camera. You're sending the same Genlock signal to all of your cameras, all your multiple cameras on the set. Next signal, composite return. So that's right here. 
So here we are in return control. Now, composite return can really be used for two effective signals. Number one, you could use it for prompter, all right? Number two, if you didn't need a prompter, you could use it for time code. So the, um, uh, the, the, re the return is going to come back in, in composite, and it's, you can either use it for composite video, time code, or prompter. Cool. Next signal, tally. Um, we don't really have a shot for that, but you're going to send tally information to the camera so your monitor and your camera can light up when you're hot. Next signal, intercom. Can you get, can you get down low here? Yeah, there it is. Five pin input for your Clearcom headset so that you're, uh, you don't have to run a separate cable or worry about wireless intercom. You are connected back to the set intercom wise through your BS300, your CA300, your totally awesome 300. All right. Finally, power. Now, power is coming right here. This, this big piece coming off of our gigantic blue cable is sending power. And you'll notice that I've got an asterisk here. Um, Natasha, thank you so much. That was awesome. Uh, why do I have an asterisk by power? Stick around, stick around. I have an asterisk by power because this digital multiplexing cable will carry power for you. But remember, digital multiplexing cable only comes in lengths of 25, 50, and 100 meters. So 75 feet, 150 feet, or 300 feet for, for my English uh, measurement system using friends. If you wanted to go further than that, you absolutely can. You absolutely can. What are you going to sacrifice if you're going to go further than that? Just power. Just means you've got to stick a battery. Oh, oh, come back around here, Natasha. Let me get that lipstick up again, Virch. See this plate right here? Do we see it? Are we good? Yeah? All right. This plate right here can come off. And Anton Bauer makes an adapter that goes right on there, right into this plate. No, no magic, no additional pieces. This little plate comes off. Anton Bauer adapter comes on, and you can power this with either an Anton Bauer battery or something like a Tandem 70 if you've got power on the set. Awesome. Awesome. If you can just hang out right there again for me. So why would you want to, um, why would you want to power this thing with a battery? Well, here's our next slide. This looks very complicated, all right? But it's a very complicated way of saying a very simple thing. If you need to go further than 100 meters, our friends at Blackmagic Design make a digital multiplexer unit. I think it's about 495 for the transmitter, 495 for the receiver, OK? You bring two signals, two coax signals, out of the base station into this unit, and you can go something like miles with fiber optic cable. So granted, yeah, you got to supply your own fiber optic cable. But oh, you got to supply your own fiber optic cable, and you got to put some kind of powering method, like that Anton Bauer plate on the back of this camera. But what you gain is an immense distance from your truck or your control center through this digital multiplexing unit. Cool? 